political parties in Oshun State have intensified campaigns to mobilize voters towards victory in the governorship elections slated for the 16th of July, 2022. The governorship candidate of the opposition People's Democratic Party, Senator Ademola Adeleke, on Tuesday, promised to transform the state capital, Oshogbo, if elected. Adeleke, during a visit to the Ataoja of Oshogbo, Oba Jimo Olanipakun, as part of his campaign in the state camp capital, lamented what he described as the bastardizing of the state, impoverishment of the people, and denying of workers and pensioners of their entitlements. Joining us now to discuss the upcoming governorship elections and the chances of the PDP in upstaging the ruling All Progressives Congress is the former Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the PDP and a member of Senator Adeleke's campaign organization. Diran Odeyemi, great to have you join us on Newsday this afternoon. Good afternoon, viewers. I'm happy to be with you this afternoon. As we know that the uh, uh, elections are coming up uh, in a couple of, in a week and some days, how are you preparing and how are you expecting things to roll out? Knowing, especially, um, unfortunately, there have been quite a lot of uh, accusations of vote buying on behalf of a number of candidates. And um, what can be done in order to douse the tension and douse the discussions of some of those uh, exchanges so that it can be free and fair come uh, Saturday the 16th? Thank you very much for the question. As a responsible political party, we believe in canvassing for votes and uh, campaigning to people in Ocean State to cast their vote for our party and our candidate, Senator Nuruddin Jackson Ademola Adeleke. Um, yesterday, we were in Oshobo, just like we have been going around the states, and we have been doing that peacefully. Without, any, without harassing anybody or intimidating the electorate. Because uh, we believe we have the support of the people, so we are hopeful to win the election. I think it's going to be 10 days from today. And uh, we are not anticipating anything. But having said that, that is not to say that we are not being harassed or being intimidated by APC. And uh, I'm sure uh, uh, many reporters were there yesterday at the palace of uh, the Atauja of Oshobo, when our members were attacked with marches and, you know, gone everywhere. As I'm speaking with you right now, we have 10 of our members who are in the hospital from marched courts. Um, but, uh, you know, we, are, we, we, we pray that, you know, God will heal them very soon. And the Atauja was so furious yesterday that when APC came to campaign, nobody harassed them. They came in quietly, and partly because nobody heard them, because they did not have the crowd. You know, they were very apprehensive, and they were not too happy that people welcome our candidates in a joyous mood, drums everywhere, and they, they thought maybe they didn't want us to see the show. So they attacked our people prior to the arrival of our candidate. But we thank God everything came back to normalcy, and the traditional ruler vehemently condemned it and even cause the people who are behind this thing, and even mention and made names. But uh, as I'm speaking with you right now, we have made series of complaints to security agencies in the state. And up to now, not a single person has been arrested, you know, in view of our complaints here and there. Our billboards that were made with millions of naira have been vandalized everywhere. They did not want to see our poster anywhere. Whereas we believe, Election and vote of the people of Oshun State does not want the blood of anybody. We have been going about canvassing for votes in a decent manner, but we are surprised at what we are getting from uh, APC. Thank you for the insight on those um, developments. But I would like to uh, um, digress a bit and ask you about the internal conflict within the ADP. Analysts are predicting that this issue of crisis management might cost you Oshun State come July 16. I'd just like to ask what the PDP is doing to manage this 
um, party cohesion in light of this development? I am not quite sure we have any crisis in Ocean State. So I don't know which crisis you are talking, talking about. about um, because in Ocean State... I, allow we, me to clarify, please. I'm not talking about a crisis in Ocean State. I'm talking about cri okay. the crisis in PDP. As a result of the um, articles pick for vice president, the vice presidential candidate. So the internal conflict in the party, I'm asking how that is being managed because analysts, political analysts are predicting that that in itself might cost you or should come July 16. We are not bothered for now about what happened with PDP at the national level. All the members of PDP in Oshun State are united and are concerned about winning the governorship election on the 16th of July. So whatever is happening at the uh, national level, we will come back to that after winning the election in Oshun State. But we are not anticipating that whatever it is, it is happening at the top, we affect us in any way. Because we are dealing with the electorates. And among ourselves, we are united. So I'm not anticipating any, any crisis or that whatever is the, is the problem at the top will affect us here, not in any way. We don't, we don't rely on the national for anything at all, other than the moral support. Now, let me follow up on that. Most of the PDP governors, about 11 of them, were absent at the inauguration of the Gubernatorial National Campaign Council for Oshun State Governorship Election. Now, what impact do you expect this to have on the election? Are you worried, perhaps, that some of these governors might not work in favor of your candidate? I want to tell you that most of these governors offered explanation for their absence. Most of them were out of the country. And apart from that, they are liaising and talking with the hierarchy of our party in the state, and they are in direct contact with our candidates. But having said that, if you look at the composition of uh, the campaign council, which runs to about 150, the question we want to ask ourselves is, are they electorate in Ocean State? No. So in what way will their absence at the inauguration of the, uh, of the campaign council affect the voting right or the voting pattern that we have worked to ensure that we win the election? Not in any way. It's not going to affect us in any way. I, just like I said, we only rely on their moral support. And spiritual, if there is any. <laughs> if, if there is any. Okay, thank you for clearing that up. On another note, um, uh, I want to get your opinion on the, uh, the, uh, the performance of the previous administration or the current administration, knowing that you are, on the, you are one of the members of Senator Adele Kay's uh, uh, campaign board, seeing that he's He's going for the run next Saturday. I'm wondering if you can give us a nice uh, brief overview of what he could bring to the table that Ocean State hasn't seen um, under the likes of uh, the previous governors. As I'm talking to you right now, the Adeleke family, especially our candidate, is an employer of labor in Ocean State. The number of youths and people working in their conglomerate establishment are more than the people this government in the past 12 years has employed. That is a credit for us. And apart from that, we are working on ensuring that we turn the state from a civil service state to a more productive state in terms of bringing in investors. To the state. And you will agree with me that the caliber of the candidate that we are putting forward is internationally exposed and nationally connected. So with this, we have even gotten assurance of many investors that we storm the state as soon as he is sworn in as the governor of the state. That is talking about employment in Ocean State. Then we are, we are talking about agriculture. We know what operates or how much of uh, uh, income that can come to us in Ocean State, if even in Lagos State, where ordinary tomato, pepper, uh, cassava, and whatever are used in Lagos from our research, we know millions of naira on daily basis are spent in Lagos alone. And we have thought as a political party, as an individual, as 
people who are prepared for governance. How much of these millions that they spend on daily basis in Lagos can we bring to Oshun through agriculture? We are working on this. We are going to encourage our farmers with loans, with facilities, and even encourage the rural areas, you know, where farming is being done to become a lively environment that we even discourage anybody from leaving the villages. That is on agriculture. On education, as we are talking right now, Oshun State is not up to date, even though they provided the infrastructure of building schools. But it is the, the schools does not produce any result. It is the performance of the students. It is the creativity and the encouragement you give to the teachers that will lead to the performance of the students. We are working on this and we have our blueprint on education. And on infrastructures, if you go to Adelike University today, you will give kudos to them that this is a mini, this is a mini town, a mini environment where everything is being done through direct labor. We have studied this, we know this, infrastructures in Oshun State will be done by indigenous, our money will no longer go to Lagos or go to big companies. We, it will be done by direct labor and by the people of Oshun State. So with this, we believe whatever we are able to gather as uh, income in Oshun State, we go around in terms of economy in the state. So all these are the plans we have for the people of Oshun State and they are embraced. They are embracing it. They are receiving us with joy and happiness. And each time we go out to campaign, in fact, there are instances that they are already celebrating our victory. And we pray that by this grace of God, this will translate into the victory for us on the 16th of July. Oh, um, let's see how your prayers <laughs> play out. But on a more serious note, security is one of the issues that INEC has raised when it comes to Oshun election, as well as vote buying. But vote buying aside, because I think you addressed that earlier on. In light of what's happened yesterday at the Federal Capital Territory, what happened with the president's convoy, what happened with the, the police commissioner who was gunned down? And like you rightly mentioned, some of your members were attacked yesterday. What assurance can you give the electorate uh, in terms of their safety, that come July 16, they will be safe when they come out to cast their votes. Briefly, if you can. I'm happy for this opportunity of raising this question. This has been of great concern for us too in PDP. Because right now, the electorates in Oshun State are being harassed and intimidated by APC. I'm saying it clearly because we have mentioned names, we have written petitions, we have addressed press conferences, informing the police, the SSS, and other security agencies of what is happening in Ocean State. But as I'm talking to you right now, not a single person has been arrested. So we were happy when yesterday we were told that the Commissioner of Police had been transferred. But we're hearing another news this morning that he has been reinstated on the order of the governor. We are yet to clear this. But what I'm saying in essence is security issue is of great concern to us in Oshun State. If we really want to, we pray and we wish to have free and fair election because we are sure and confident of uh, winning this election. But we want to appeal and we want Nigerians. Okay. To please help us look into the situation we are in Oshun State. And on the issue of vote buying, I've said this several even Mr. though Adrian, some people try I to mean, turn it I'm upside so down. So we so don't have the money. Yes. I'm so, so sorry to interrupt you, but we're completely out of time. Thank you so much for joining us on New State.